What's going on, everybody? Jada Black here. <clears throat> Back with another edition of What the Fuck is Going On in News and Entertainment. I have some topics here, and uh, hopefully you like the topics that I'm speaking about. All the topics will be in the description box, so y'all can see what's going to be discussed here if you don't see them in the title. But uh, make sure y'all like this particular podcast make sure you continue to donate and support the platform you support the platform monthly on patreon five dollars a month or more to join the elite <clears throat> you know and also if there's topics that you think will be relevant to the things that i speak about you can send them to the email uh, that too will be in the description box as well now the first topic is going to be about 50 cent he is no stranger to being sued, okay? You know, 50 Cent is probably one of the most sued rappers out there, okay? Most of the time, those lawsuits are financial. This could be, a, this is financial too, but it's more business dealings. This is about a hurt helper who is mad because her ex, who should be the one who she should be upset at the most, posted video clip of her performing certain acts. Okay. Now, according to TMZ, she went and hired the lawyers that represented Black China in her, I guess, defamation case that she had against, or not defamation, uh, like a revenge porn defamation type case she had against Rob Kardashian. And according to them, <clears throat> it says, loving hip hop star Tierra Marie made good on her tearful vow to sue her ex-boyfriend and 50 Cent for posting her sexually explicit video and photos. In the suit, Tierra says her ex, Akbar Abdul Ahad, logged into her Instagram account and posted the video, which included an image of Tierra with the ejaculate all over her face. She believes Akbar was getting back at her because she didn't want to be in a uh, polyamorous relationship uh, let's see. as he had suggested. Tierra says that's why she broke up with him earlier this month and shortly afterward he informed her his phone had been stolen in docs obtained by TMZ, she says that was the moment she knew he was planning to post their sex videos. Tiara says she deleted the IG post as soon as she saw it, but that's when 50 Cent got involved. According to the suit, the rapper posted the ejaculate screen grab in black and white in order to highlight the fluid on her face. <laughs> 50 Cent is a troll. 50 Cent is a troll, man. If y'all see 50 Cent's back and forth on social media, you would know this guy is a complete troll, okay? She points out 50 has 18 million followers, which means the cat was now fully out of the bag. She's also pissed about his caption on the image, Get the Strap, which she believes encouraged his fans to harm or harass her. Tierra as Fiddy got a bad track record, pointing out he already had to fork over $7 million to Rick Ross' baby mama for posting a sex tape clip of her. This is why she's suing him, because of that particular case. But that was different, because that was a whole tape. That was a whole sex tape. You know, so... In this situation, he only posted a photo. He didn't post any video. So it's going to be harder for her to get money. Maybe she's looking at this as a, as a, as a cash grab. But that those are two different situations. And I'm pretty sure 50 Cent isn't the only one who got those photos and posted on social media. Tierra says it's a brazen attempt to slut shame her that's causing her significant long-term emotional injuries requiring psychiatric services. She's suing both men for revenge porn, invasion of her privacy, and emotional distress. I've seen Tierra Marie on Love and Hip Hop. I watched a couple episodes just to get the gist of it. She can be very violent. She's always fighting. You know what I'm saying? Just very 
emotionally unstable Th those photos or videos being put out I mean it's not causing her any more distress that she hasn't already caused herself you know but people say whatever to get these lawsuits to hire the Lisa Blooms and all these you know <clears throat> I call them de domestic violence chasers, you know, domestic violence case chasers and, you know, anything involving a woman lost in any, anything involving a woman that they can sue somebody for. They're the first ones there. In this situation to me, um, I don't know if she's going to have a case because 50 can say, well, other people got those photos as well. I'm pretty sure if you look her up on Instagram, you're going to see those photos. You might even see the video. What about the porn websites that have the video? Are you going to sue them too? You must be willing to go. Now, the only way she wins anything is if she sues the person who put the actual video out. She's still going to have to prove that her ex-boyfriend did it. You see, with the, the, the Rick Ross situation, that was clear proof that he put the tape out. I believe, from what I understand, he put the tape on his website. Or a website that he owned, you know. So I think that you know she's trying to do the Black China thing and hire the same lawyers to get money out of Fifty. But what she needs to understand is, unless you're gonna sue everybody that posted that video or photos, then I don't know how you're gonna be able to get any money out of him. The one thing that she can hope for is that he settles. And I don't think 50 is going to do that. 50 Cent is not, you know, he is not new to this lawsuit thing. You know what I'm saying? But um, I just think that 50 Cent, you know, his trolling people hard like he does may have caught up to him, you know. And he might be paying the piper socially, but financially, I don't know how she's going to be able to win this unless he settles. And I don't think he's going to do that. As far as the ex-boyfriend, this is what effeminate men do. This is what guys who are hurt by a female because they're they're over emotional. They go and they try to seek some type of revenge. And I tell these and I tell these women, and I say I do say in my videos, you you females have got to avoid uh, I can't say the word right. You have got to avoid these beta males. You got to avoid these over emotional, highly sensitive dudes who don't know how to walk away from a relationship. But y'all, but some of these women just love dating these guys who emotional levels are on the same as theirs. But y'all let me know in the comment section below about that and let me know your thoughts. All right. Moving on. Let's talk about Nev Shulman. He is on the show Catfish. Okay. Now. There are some allegations being made about him. Sexual misconduct. This is a guy who has he did the documentary movie about being catfished and he has done he has had the TV show on MTV called Catfish as well. Now, according to Hot New Hip Hop, it says that we just posted MTV's recent decision to halt their series Catfish after the host and creative Nev Shulman was accused of sexual misconduct. Since the news broke, Nev has now come forward with a statement after his accuser released a video describing her encounter with Nev and the producers of the show. So I guess she was a participant on the show. The behavior described in this video did not happen and I'm fortunate that there are a number of former colleagues who were present during this time period who are willing to speak up with the truth. I have always been transparent about my life and would always take responsibility for my actions. And these claims are false, he said via page six. In a video below, Aisha Morgan, who appeared on season four of the show, changes the name of the main guy on the show to Jack to explain her story. She said that Jack repeatedly asked her if she was sure that she was a lesbian. I don't think you're a lesbian. I don't think you met the right guy yet. Do you think I'm attractive? He allegedly said. Aisha said Jack told her that he had a large nether region and that and they should have sex so he could evaluate her sexuality. 
Jack apparently didn't stop and even tried to initiate something in the hotel room. Aisha then explains how a female producer, who she calls Carol, assaulted her. After having drinks one night, she said she began slipping in and out of consciousness and then woke up and she was on top of me. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this kind of reminds me of the Chris Brown, uh, the, the female suing Chris Brown. She said that she was basically assaulted by a female, you know? But again, this is only this particular female side of the story. Uh, let's see. The next night while in the hotel room, Jack said, how about you do what you did to Carol, but on me? Aisha said he grabbed her arm and pulled her away and left the room. A crew member from the show tells Page Six that he questions her allegations due to the filming schedule of the show. I have a lot of doubts, probably because she, over the years, has remembered a lot of the basics wrong. And a lot of that is just couldn't have happened the way she said it. Although she admits that Nev could flirt, he said he never heard of Nev being that gratuitous. She said he was talking about the size of his dick and didn't, let's see, which I didn't think he would ever do. That's just, that just isn't his style. Hmm. This is a very uh, out of the blue situation. Um, when you look at this, I'm not saying that everything she's saying is wrong, but we have to take the time to really look at the situation. Um, I'm not saying that he's above trying to holler at women, because trust me, when you do a show like that and you have these women who you're spending intimate time with, you know what I'm saying? He's probably attracted to a few of them. <laughs> I mean, some of y'all would think he's attracted to something else, but you know. So he's spending intimate time with them. He's learning about them. You know what I'm saying? These women seem to trust him. And sometimes people can take advantage of that. People can take advantage of the power that they have. But in this situation, I don't think that for the most part, I don't know. I, I just think that this could have been a situation where Nev could have been really attracted to her so you may have asked her a bunch of inappropriate questions and i i just he what he's, he's not being accused of assault or anything just misconduct so i guess she's saying that you know he he's hitting on her and she found it to be uncomfortable because she's a lesbian quote unquote i just think that more info needs to come out but this is this is what happened this is the pandora's box of al allegations you know what i'm saying if you are a male and you're hopping on this me too bandwagon and you're pointing the finger at different people understand that that finger can be pointed at you i don't care if you're a feminist i don't care if you support whatever they're doing just understand allegations can be brought upon you as well you are not immune from allegations Okay, so more may come out, but I don't think it's looking good for her in this situation because he has a whole crew of people who could who could valid no, val can validate his side of the story, and she really doesn't have anybody, and that's unfortunate. So that's why I'm not going to totally say that she's wrong. Something went on there. Either he was asking her a bunch of questions that she was uncomfortable with. You know, or the, the female, you know, woman who works with them did something with her. Something went on in that situation. But like I said, I'm going to wait, you know, for more in, uh, more information. But I'm going to say this. You guys, you quote unquote, you know, male allies of, of, the, of the Me Too movement, understand the finger can be pointed right back at you. You're not immune. Okay. So y'all can let me know what y'all think about that particular story. Okay. Let me talk about a, a quick news story. Let's, let me talk about this Negro. Uh, according to the New York Post, a 25-year-old man decided that he wanted to be in high school again. I tell you, a lot of these guys who used to be cool in high school, once they leave high school, it's rough for them. 
you know, especially they had it easy in high school. They had, you know, female attention was easy. They didn't have to worry about paying bills. They lived with their parents. But once they get out of high school and they probably had a kid or two, the, 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 the realities of being a man, the realities of being an adult is, is going to show eventually. Okay. And according to the New York Post, this high school hoop star was revealed as a grown man. Okay. Now, there, there's been other sports and other, other uh, guy, uh, men in sports or, you know, you know, athletes who people think are older than they say they are. You know, you have a lot of players who come from, you know, uh, the Caribbean. They come from these Spanish speaking countries that they come to America to play baseball who people believe are older than they say they are. You know what I'm saying? Now, according to this article, so the 25-year-old man lived a double life as a teenager for nine months, even dating a 14-year-old. That's not good, bro. Just so he could play high school basketball again, school officials said. Sidney Bouvard Gilstrap Portly claimed to be a Hurricane Harvey refugee in August when he enrolled as a freshman. <laughs> a freshman, not a not a sophomore, not a junior, but a freshman. Under the name Rashawn Richardson at Skyline High School in Dallas. I've heard of Skyline. Um because y'all yeah, know I'm a I'm a fan of, of college athletics, especially college football, and I watch a lot of the recruiting that news that they do. Skyline is a well known athletic high school in Dallas. If you're from the, the area, you know what I'm talking about. He later transferred to Hillcrest High School, where he joined the basketball team and dominated younger players en route to being named the District Offensive Player of the Year, the Dallas Morning News reports. He took that as an opportunity to gain access to our schools. Dallas Independent School District Spokeswoman Robin Harris told the newspaper he was fairly savvy to be able to utilize that type of position knowing that we were accepting you have been selected as the he was fairly savvy to be able to utilize that type of position knowing that we were accepting of harvey students gilstrap portly fully immersed himself in the high school scene going as far as to date a 14 year old classmate according to the girl's mother so this guy is out here hollering at the girl, the young girl, not the senior chicks, but he's hollering at the at the freshman, 14 years, 14 years old. I guess I don't know if he wanted to make it look like he was actually a freshman, but dude, you gotta understand that eventually, you know, somebody figure things out. It's not gonna look good for you. It's gonna be very bad for you. It's unbelievable to me that he could get away with this. The unidentified woman said, "I don't know what." how the school let this slip through the cracks oh trust me let me tell you something there are a lot of men and women who look who are in their 20s some of them are about in their 30s who look like they're still in high school so if you have a, a tall skinny kid with no facial hair and he wears like a, a certain type of haircut he can look like he's still in high school and i think that's how he was probably able to fool them now, if he had a full beard, I think it'd be a little different, you know. The woman who spoke on the condition of amenity <laughs> says she didn't approve of her daughter's relationship with the man they both knew as the 17-year-old was shunned. But the woman said her daughter told her that she did not have a sexual relationship with Gilstrap Portly, whom she never met but had spoken to on the phone. He was always respectful to me, she told the news for, uh, news for She told the newspaper. He said he understood my concerns, but said that he was only 17 and that he didn't see a problem with them dating. That also isn't good for you, bro. Gilstrap Portly deception was finally revealed when one of his former coaches from North Mesquite High School recognized him during a tournament in April. Now that's got to be awkward. That that got that has got to be awkward. <laughs> the coach then got in touch with his counterpart at Hillcrest to inform him that one of my former players who graduated a time ago was playing for you, according to Harris. 
He was a good kid, North Mesquite coach Philip Randall told the newspaper. I never had any problem out of him. That's why I was shocked when I heard that all of this came out because that's not the kid I, that I knew. Gilstrap Portley, who had no previous criminal history, was arrested Friday on a charge of tampering with government records. He was taken into custody at the Dallas County Jail, but has since been released after posting bail court record shows. School officials, meanwhile, notified parents of the bizarre incident in a letter Monday and vowed to review district policies. Which means they may have they may have to uh you may need uh what do you call them? That you may need uh, social security numbers. You may have to provide those. Maybe I think he might have provided a fake one. But what they might do is shit. They might. They what they're probably gonna say. We need to talk to one of your parents. If you're, if you are a kid who is from a situation of being a refugee from a hurricane, being misplaced. We need to talk to one of your parents before you can enroll in this school. That's probably what they're gonna do. We need to talk to a blood relative, at least a parent. To verify this, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's, he could have went to college and probably played. He's 25, you know. He could have played semi-pro. I mean, but it just, I don't think it was just about basketball. I think that he just really liked high school, you know, and he felt like he was a guy in high school and wanted that again, wanted that experience. Cause you have these guys, man. They were the man in high school, you know, and now they did just regular dudes who are probably out here struggling. You know, the girls ain't coming around like they used to. You know, they're not the, the most popular guy anymore. You know, they're nobodies, basically. And I think he wanted to feel that um, he wanted to feel like that again. But I think he went about it the wrong way. Dude, you, you can't do this. It's wrong. And that's why you got arrested. And that's why you have this situation now. You know, I know it's hard when you feel like you were the guy and now you feel like you're a nobody, but you have to move on. You know, we all have to move on. A lot of us don't like getting older, but we know that's the part of life. If you want to continue to live, that's a part of life. And it's also part of life for you to understand that those memories you had in high school will always last. But you have to take the opportunity to move on, bro. That's what I'm saying. Y'all can let me know in the comment section about uh, this video, you know, of this particular topic. And let me know what you think, all right? The next topic is going to be sort of like an update on... San Francisco 49ers player Ruben Foster. I made a video about Ruben Foster. If you want to see my video about Ruben Foster, okay? Uh, it's on my channel. It's on the channel. But I, what I probably may do is link it in the comment section. So you'll see the link to the Ruben Foster video in the comment section. You can go and check it out, all right? Now, according to Total Pro Sports, Ruben Foster's ex-girlfriend admits robbing him of eight grand and falsely accusing another ex-boyfriend of domestic violence. But, you know, I want to say this. I was watching the Jesse Lee Peterson interview with Amber Rose. And Amber Rose said that every woman who is either claiming uh, harassment, claiming assault, you know, claiming domestic violence... They should be believed no matter what. That is the problem. Okay. Because what's going to happen is men careers or lives are going to be ruined because of allegations that aren't true. Okay. Now, according to this article, it says Alyssa Enos. That's her name. The ex-girlfriend of Ruben Foster took the stand on Thursday to come clean about the blatant lies she told to investigators and clear his name after she accused of domestic violence. Enos admitted she lied to the police, fabricated the claims to finan for financial gain, and her anger stemmed from the fact that the 49ers linebacker had broken up with her and she wanted revenge. That is what it was all about. But you still had people trying to say that you know that doesn't mean that she that that she um that he didn't do it, or that she took some type of money. Yeah, she took money. She stole money. 
Reuben Foster and his representative did not pay this woman one dime. She's coming clean because she knew they were going to find out she was lying. Okay. They were going to find out she was lying. Because he probably has very good lawyers. And I just believe that there should be a law put into place. That if you lie about claims of assault or D a DV that you should be arrested. You should be arrested for false statements. They arrest people for lying all the time. Why can't you arrest these women for making these fake fraudulent allegations? Because trust me, if you're a man and you're making false uh, false claims or you're lying about certain things, you will be arrested. No questions asked. And this female, this Alyssa Ennis, should definitely be uh, charged with lying and making false claims. Now, these are some tweets from David Lombardi. This is according to her. She says, I wanted to sue Ruben. It was a money scheme. It was all about money. I wanted to get him. Ennis also said that Ruben Foster did not throw the cell phone. Ennis said that she threw the phone at Foster. Ennis also said that Foster always sprinted away from her to avoid fighting. But she broke back into the house multiple times to talk to her. Ain't that a shame? Ain't that a shame? You got a grown man, a, a, an NFL linebacker who has to sprint away from her because he wanted to avoid getting in this situation. And she knew this. She knew this. Ennis says that only one of her three 911 calls asked police for help. The other two she hung up. I was threatening Ruben that I was going to F up his career. And y'all trying to tell me she was bought off? No, she was caught lying. So all of you people who want to claim that we that that women should be believed when they make these claims all oh, y'all are full of shit this stuff goes on all the time these chicks love making threats let me tell you something we as black men get the police called on us more than anybody we do okay or we get threats of the police being called on us. It's never a dull moment. Especially if you're dating emotionally unstable chicks like this. Let's see what else was said. Ennis says the only one. Uh, I read that. Ina says that she sat in the driveway contemplating whether or not to ruin Foster's career. What should I do? You know what? Fuck it. So I flagged down a passing driver to call 911 and make a false report against Foster. So <sighs> another tweet after Foster broke up with her, Ina says she went berserk and that Foster ran away from her and he kept chasing and she i guess she kept chasing him and breaking into the house i told him i'm about to f your shit up make sure you don't have a job tomorrow ina said i believe that that's something that's something an over emotional chick would say that's what an over emotional chick would say and he has to run away from her do you know how much power she felt in that situation He's literally trying to avoid his career being ruined. He has a child to take care of. This man has a child to take care of. But she don't care about that because she knows that she's no longer going to be able to benefit from his finances. His name is being dragged through the mud. He probably will never be able to get this stain of bullshit off of him because of her. But you know what? The media is not going to turn on her. They're still going to push this narrative. They want to vilify men and then they get mad when men don't want to marry them. When men don't want to have children with them. Why are you getting mad for? You've ruined any type of, of decent relationship that you will ever have with a man. Because you want to sit there and vilify them all the time. 
I really wanted to kill him. Ina said of Ruben Foster, I was so hurt. Aw, you were hurt, aw. Because he didn't want to be with you. Because you were busted and, and he was disgusted with you. Ennis acknowledged that she originally told police that Foster dragged her by her hair down the stairs while she was lying down, punched while, while she was lying down, punched her ten times, threw her out of the front door, and spit on her, saying, Fuck you. But Enos says there were all lies. All lies. And she's saying this in court, so she can't take this back. I don't care what none of you um me too crew want to say she said this in court under oath there's no taking this back none Ennis says that she lied about Foster throwing her dog too to make matters even worse Ennis went on to admit that she had done something similar to another ex-boyfriend when she falsely accused him of DV now this is a tweet according to Cam Inman Ruben Foster's ex-girlfriend admits that in 2011 she falsely accused an ex-boyfriend of domestic violence after he broke up with her. It, we see a theme here. When these guys leave these women, they look to ruin them. This is why I'm 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 of the mind that you don't get into any serious relationship with a woman while you're it, while you're a professional athlete. And if you do, have it be long distance. Don't have her living in your house. Okay? Because she's going to get comfortable. And then when you break up with her, she's not going to take it very well. Ruben Foster's attorney, Joshua Bentley, to Alyssa Ennis. This is his attorney. You need, in this case... When Reuben Foster broke up with you, that I guess it's, it put knee, but I guess it went to say you knew. You knew in this case when Reuben Foster broke up with you that you were going to go to your playbook and ruin his career. Isn't that true? She said, yes, sir. Few minutes later, after two hour testimony, she left court in tears because she realizes that she is, is on the verge of almost ruining this guy's career. And I got to give it to the 49ers for sticking with, you know, Ruben Foster through this whole thing. Because there have been people calling uh, calling for him to be released. And this guy did nothing wrong except for date her. And she realizes it. Maybe she does have a conscience. On top of lying about domestic abuse, she also committed robbery against Foster. In the time since the February 11th incident, Ina says she has had little contact with Foster. In one of the few interactions, she acknowledged following Foster to a car dealership as he returned a Corvette, taking photos of the car and then sending them to Foster via text with threats that she would sell them to TMZ. She also admitted to stealing more than 8000 from Foster after taking his account and routing numbers that money has since been seized by the bank and returned to Foster. But Ennis said that she still has the two Rolexes she took from Foster in a safety, safety deposit box in Louisiana. Oh, he gonna get that. You're not getting that. You're not seeing them Rolexes again. Ennis also said Thursday that she had been in touch with Foster recently because she was dealing with depression from the breakup and wanted his help. So she could check herself into a clinic in Louisiana. Ain't that a bitch? You you lying, disgusting alpha. Again, no charges are expected to be brought on Enos for any of this, and she'll likely be able to walk away with a clean slate and free to do this once again to another man. She do this to another man, you know, she's gonna get herself in a world of hurt because Reuben Foster has something to lose. There are other people who don't have anything to lose. And she is going to be able to walk away from this. And there are going to be some sucker that is willing to get into a relationship with her. That is the problem right there. And there's also going to be a, a lot of people who are willing to give her a pass. But Reuben Foster, 
is he gonna get a pass is he gonna be able to uh not have to deal with this anymore who knows but uh, y'all can let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Make sure that you like this podcast. All the topics will be in the description box. Make sure you continue to support the platform. Share this vi- share this podcast. Let everybody see it. Okay? Also, continue to donate and, and help me make my content better. Subscribe to Patreon, $5 a month or more. Uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the live streaming channel. And that's it, folks. See you.